we meet again at last. The circle is now complete. What's the world coming to? Well, you got a problem with what I did, Anthony? Oh, no, hey, no. Fucking rat, anyway. His whole family's all rats. rats, rats, rats. Could have brought up to be a rat. Yeah, I'm real sorry your mom blew up, Ricky. Now you're gonna take the fucking thing. You're gonna take the hole. You're gonna do it. I got no fucking line. You're gonna do it. I realized that what was living behind that boy's eyes was pure and simple. Jesus Christ, mister, you okay in there? Ah, put some vintage coffee around here someplace. Do you have any idea what the cost of your actions is? What their effect might be? Are you to give them hope? What do you give them? We give them happiness. And they give us authority. What's going on, you wild ghouls and rascals? It's Logan Myers back here for the Cinefellas Podcast, episode 95. And I'm going to tell you what, things are about to get wild, per usual. So first of all, how are you guys doing? How are you guys surviving through the pandemic? Are you hanging out at home, watching movies, TV shows, playing video games like I've been doing the past nine months? Yeah, it's getting a little boring, but you got to keep your sanity somehow in some sort of outlet, healthy outlet, not drinking and all that fun stuff, but uh, enjoying some entertainment, and that's what I've been doing a lot of lately. Last month was very crazy and hectic, but fun at the same time. We did 31 Days of Horror and released like 33 videos on YouTube last month, so the past week I've been trying to recuperate and just relax and get caught up with some TV shows. Been having a great time with The Mandalorian. The Mandalorian debuted season two on October 30th, so I've watched a few of those episodes. We just released our review of the first two episodes, Henry and I had a great time with that. Go ahead and head on over to our YouTube channel, Cinefellas, and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. And we've got like over 700 videos of all different sorts of movies, TV shows, podcasts, interviews, all that fun stuff. We love keeping up to date on our YouTube channel, putting out quality videos for you guys. We love you guys, and we do this all for you. But besides that, the Cinefellas boys have been getting pretty wild as of late. Niall has been very busy. He just interviewed a local filmmaker in Florida. That's episode 93 of the Cinefellas podcast. Armando had a review of one of the Spike Lee films over on our website. Old King Clancy had some reviews. And then we have the upcoming podcast with the entire Cinefellas crew. For the most part, there's like six of us. We shoot that on Sunday night. So that's coming up this weekend and we'll have that out next week. So always really busy here at Cinefellas, always keeping busy with projects, talking to people, you know, sharing our thoughts on movies and TV shows, entertainment news. And I can't believe it's the middle of November already. Coming up to Thanksgiving next month is Christmas. And I'm really excited for the new PlayStation 5 that's dropping tomorrow. So I'm hoping to get that and be playing some new video games, Miles Morales, Assassin's Creed Valhalla. And I'll be putting out some videos on our Level Up series, our video game series. We don't have too many of those videos. Uh, but I'm, I'm looking forward to shooting some more of that and getting on Twitch with our good mate walker sexy ranger he has a twitch channel called d pads and dice if you guys haven't already go over there and check him out on twitch he's always playing phasmophobia it's a really cool ghost hunting game that you play on steam checked it out a few times and it's really spooky if you're into that so if you guys haven't heard of that game check it out it's i think it's like 13 bucks right now you have to play it on your pc but it's definitely worth it if you're into supernatural and ghosts so we got a lot of good projects Things coming out shortly, brand new PlayStation, new Xbox. We'll be doing some video game reviews and talking about that as well on the Cinefellas podcast with the entire crew. So stay tuned for that and a lot of great stuff. If you guys haven't already, go ahead and check us out over on our website, cinefellas.com, or Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, our social media platforms. We're always putting out stuff on that every day in terms of news and entertainment business. So besides that, today I had the opportunity to interview the director making his feature film debut, Seth Savoy, and uh, he's the director of a new film called Echo Boomers that takes place right in our backyard here in Chicago. And uh, we have the Chicago resident, Chicago local himself, good old Michael Shannon. I love this guy. He's like a ticking time bomb. And uh, we have a bunch of other actors in this film. Alex Pettifer, he is in I Am Number 4. 
And we have Patrick Schwarzenegger, which is Arnold's son, who's been popping up in a lot of indie films. He was in Daniel Isn't Real that came out, uh, I think it was last year. That starred Patrick Schwarzenegger and also Miles Robbins, which is Tim Robbins' son, Susan Sarandon's son. So that was a really good psychological horror film. But uh, Schwarzenegger's definitely been popping up, and he's really the main actor, the main focal point in Echo Boomers. He plays a 20-something uh, kid. He just graduated college. He's, you know obviously in debt from going to school like most of us he's trying to start his career and just really striking out at all these different interviews and looking for some money he meets up with his cousin and they're part of this organization that's uh stealing from the rich people and taking all their money and selling their paintings and things like that and uh really taking the money is a big f you to society to the upper class to the rich that are you know living their lives blowing money on, on stupid things having these really enormous houses, mansions, and things like that. So it was a really great film. I really enjoyed it. I love what Seth did directing this. Visually, the whole atmosphere, uh, having Chicago as a backdrop, the music, everything about it, I really had a great time with the independent film. I really can't wait for you guys to check it out. But in this conversation, we talked about Chicago, how he went to Columbia, you know, making the film, working with Michael Shannon and the cast, any obstacles, you know, the message, the meaning of this movie, really focusing on millennials. And millennials are looked at as lazy and young and don't really try in life. But, uh, you know, these millennials in this movie uh, really proves something differently. It really shows that they work hard, play hard. Growing up and listening to society, what they tell us, you need to go to college and get a job. But most of the time, it's not even worth it. You know, you're 100 $200,000 $200,000 in debt from going to school. And, and then you're making minimum wage at your first job. It just really doesn't add up. And it's a really good message here. A lot of things that people don't really think about, but for myself going to college and then getting a position in IT, I totally relate to this movie, even though I'm not a millennial, but I can really feel for these characters and what they're going through and what they have to overcome throughout the film. And it's just really well done. Great story. A really great directing from Seth and uh, had a really great time with this guy. He's going to be at the music box in Chicago this weekend, they're doing screening of Echo Boomers. So if you guys are in the Chicagoland area, definitely check that out. I'm hoping to make it up there this weekend as well. Not too far from my house. So here is my conversation with the director of Echo Boomers, Seth Savoy. Let's get to it, shall we? Hey Seth, how are you? Hey Logan, how you doing, man? Uh, not too bad, not too bad. Trying to survive with all the craziness going on in the world. What about yourself, dude? No, dude, another day above ground. You know, that's how I've been looking at it. <laughs> <laughs> Some unusual times we're going through, but uh, hopefully we can look towards the future and get past all this stuff. Yeah, totally, man. Totally. Yeah, for sure. Well, I just uh, checked out Echo Boomers, had an absolute blast with this movie, and had some questions for you about that film. Oh, dude, I'm so glad you enjoyed it, man. We haven't we haven't showed we haven't sent it to a lot of people, so I'm like kind of nervous how people are going to respond to it. So it's refreshing to hear that you liked it. Oh yeah, for sure. And then I love you know how it's in Chicago where we're from, so that was a really cool backdrop to the film. Are you uh are you uh are you in Chicago? Not anymore. I'm I'm way out in the suburbs. I used to live in the city. Uh, me and the other guy for Cinefels used to live in the city, but not anymore. Oh, well, we're doing, um, it's going to the music box this weekend. So just heads up. Oh, really? Yeah, I know where that's at. I've been yeah. A bunch of- yeah, yeah, they're playing at the music. They're actually doing the drive in. So we're actually doing a, like a soft premiere at the drive in, uh, tomorrow night, um, oh. to be COVID friendly. And then, and then Friday it starts playing at the music box, which I think it sold out its Friday show, but man, you should come out. I'll be there Saturday or Sunday. Oh, for sure. I got nothing really going on this weekend. I'll have to stop by. It's not far from us, so I have to do that. Yeah, totally. Yeah, dude. For sure. That sounds awesome. So, uh, first of all, like, how did you get involved with this project? Man, I, I found this story found me in like 2013. I had, I just graduated film school at Columbia and I was like feeling this pressure of, of finding and creating my own work. And, you know, I spent a hefty amount of my savings going to film school and, I got to the finish line and realized that there's no shortage of filmmakers in the industry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, serendipitously enough, I, I came across these Chicago headlines of uh, these young college kids breaking into these wealthy homes. And I could really, like, understand their frustration on a personal level. Um, mm-hmm. 
And I understood how these group of broke college kids who played by the rules and were suddenly so in debt felt this angst and rage. And, and I kind of felt just like them. And so I took that and I kind of ran with it and it became Echo Boomers. Absolutely, dude. Uh, well, this film, I can relate to it in many ways. Um, and you said you went to Columbia. I had some friends that went to that college too, a really good school. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I feel like our generation, like this millennial generation, can definitely relate to this movie. Do you still live in Chicago, or do you live in? Illinois? Yeah, man, I live in I live in Pilsen. Oh, do you? Nice. Yeah, yeah. I got some friends over there. It's cool as hell. I love Chicago. Um, yeah. What was the overall experience like making this film? Uh, you know, it was a long process. Honestly, um, I wrote it for two years. Um, it went to Sundance. Um, it won the pitch competition there. Um, after that, Michael Shannon found it. Once Mike found it, we kind of took this this idea of casting of, like, let's not just go out there and get the hottest millennial superstars in the industry. Let's find the talent that are actually going to be the next generation of Michael Shannon. And mm-hmm. so it took us, like, three years to cast it. Um, so it took a while. But I think we did it properly. You know, we didn't want to rush it. We wanted to find actors that we were actually in love with. Um, mm-hmm. And it was awesome, man. I mean, we shot, you know, I, sh- I got more days than I than I actually had scheduled. And I think we did a beautiful job of it. Absolutely. Yeah. I love the cast of this movie. A few of them I wasn't familiar with, but uh, I've seen Patrick Schwarzenegger pop up in a few indies lately. He's got some uh, pretty good acting chops like his dad. And, um, Dude, yeah, I, was, I felt like he hadn't been given a chance yet, you know? Yeah, I didn't really know what to expect with him and his character, but uh, he really knocked it out of the park in this film, so I'm interested to see where his career goes, you know? Yeah, yeah, definitely. And Alex, you know, Alex has kind of been off the map lately, and so it's kind of refreshing to see him come back and really just, just knock this out of the park. Yeah, I remember he was he got big like 2010. I saw him in a bunch of movies and I haven't seen him in a long time. So it was cool seeing him in this film and seeing that he's still acting, you know. Yeah, yeah, and and just kind of the way he approaches it too. Um, you know, cause he was in Magic Mike and he was in a lot of Soderbergh's movies and um right. And I realized it like on set, I realized why Soderbergh why Steven Soderbergh loves Alex Pettifer so much. Because, like, when you call action, he's giving you something so creative and unpredictable. Every take, you're just glued to the screen. Yeah, absolutely. And it comes off a, a bit Im- intimidating in this film and, like, menacing. There's, like, something dark about him, which I absolutely love. I haven't seen him do that before. Yeah, and what's interesting is he's he's kind of like that in person, not in a very intimidating way, but in, in the movie, he plays into it in that intimidating way, and it, and it works really well. Um, how was Michael Shannon? I've been a huge fan of his for like 20 years. I mean, he seems like he could be a ticking time bomb. <laughs> yeah, he, he kind of seems like that, but he's really, uh, he's really, a, 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 how would I describe it? Like extremely understanding, which I know he doesn't come off that way. You know, he always comes off as the bad guy. But like, yeah. like when he showed up on set, like, you know, I've, I had Michael Shannon and Leslie Ann Warren the two kind of vets that have both been nominated in my first movie. So like, you definitely got to realize like they've done this probably 300 times while I'm walking in there for my first day. (laughs) You know what I mean? And so there was like this huge, like intimidation. Like I was kind of worried about it because like they have done this so much and I have so much to learn to still learn. And, um, and so I was worried about that, but, but there was something about Shannon that just he didn't have to say it, but it felt like he cared about me as a creative and mm-hmm. it was okay to make missteps. And he was cool with that. He understood the learning process and that we have to be comfortable so we can make mistakes to grow. And weirdly, enough, maybe that was all in my head, but I felt like he was telling me that without telling me that and it created this great environment of just like creativity. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. He seems like a cool guy to work with, and I've been watching his career forever. And it's cool he's from Chicago, too, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
With that being said, did you come across any obstacles while filming this in Chicago? Yeah, so we, we shot half of it in Salt Lake, half of it in Chicago. And, like, I, I wanted it in Chicago so badly. So I definitely made sure we shot majority of it there. But, um, I mean, honestly, I think Chicago is one of the single easiest places to make a movie. Um, yeah. because LA is completely tapped out, you know, people have been making movies there forever. You're never going to find an investor there. New York city. It's so big. It's so large. You're so small in the industry in Chicago is like this perfect middle ground of like where you have investors that really haven't dove into that filmmaking space yet. You know, we have a big TV world here. So you have all the gear, um, the film office with its huge tax credit. I mean, I, I think Chicago is so underrated. It's kind of unbelievable to me. So a lot of big films have been filmed in Chicago, but I think it's like a hidden gem, too, that a lot of people don't know about or never been to. So I think you really captured that ap- atmosphere pretty perfectly in this movie. Cool. Dude, I'm, I'm glad to hear that because I had, like, a lot of pride on, like, making sure that Chicago was depicted. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Absolutely, and uh, the PR company was reaching out to us because they said it was from Chicago. They knew that we we're from there, so we had to hop on this and see what it's all about. And I was yeah, telling the rest definitely. of the, the rest of the Cinefellas guys last night, like you guys got to check out this movie. It's really awesome. So they're gonna watch it this week. Cool. That's exciting, man. That's really exciting. Spreading the word, trying to spread the love too. Um, yeah, definitely, since, man. I appreciate it. So this movie is based on a true story. It really dives into issues that millennials are coming across, like we were talking about before, going to college, struggling to start their careers. Why do you think this issue exists? And as a nation, how do we fix it? Man, if I had the answer to that question, <laughs> I would be a millionaire. Um, yeah, I think that um, I think that this movie really brings up this kind of age-old, like uh, millennials versus baby boomers, right? And uh-huh. it shows the millennials as, like, we specifically decided to show the ugliest scenario of a millennial. And, mm-hmm. yeah, they're handling this in the complete wrong way. But we also try to show throughout the film of all the positive things that this generation has done. And hopefully, you know, that last scene at the end, it kind of really jams it home. But, you know, millennials have been such a great and positive um, force when it comes to changing you know, the workplace and making sure equal pay happens, um, racial equality, kind of all these things millennials have kind of been the forefront on. Um, and that's kind of what, uh, you know, the movie's trying to show is like, yeah, we still do have to figure out this, this debt thing because the next generation, the Generation Z, they're starting to deal with the exact same problems. And it's sad to me that this movie is going to be relatable to them. You know, mm. yeah, I think a lot of people can relate to this film, and it's obviously a problem. It's like you go to college and then you start your career, and you're going to be two hundred thousand dollars in debt, and you know it's not the way to go. No, 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 exactly what you said. Like millennials, were, you know, we we get the we we're the one who at the end of the day has to pay the bill. So <laughs> yeah, everybody's got to pay rent and all the normal bills like everybody else. And even though these, like, characters are criminals, as an audience, you really feel for them, especially in Lance's character, played by Patrick Schwarzenegger. Do you think the uh, the younger generation will relate to this movie and maybe change their minds about going to college in their future? I, I, I hope so. Um, I think that um, college is a, is a pretty big scam, personally. <laughs> you know, yeah. like, uh, you'd much rather just take an inter- internship on what you want to do rather than spend, you know, a hundred thousand dollars going to college. Um, yeah, I hope so. And and I think that they'll enjoy this too, because they're trying to change the system. I feel like just as much as we are. And, Mm -hmm. you know, you always learn from the generation before you. And I feel like that we've done a really good job of showing them kind of what's important. And I think that generation will be the one that hopefully really starts breaking these molds. And I really love this movie and the message it relays about that. It made me think about my life decisions and wishing I can go back in time and not go to college because I'm, you know, having that huge amount of debt is not fun and then struggling to find a, you know, a career. So it made me think about things and wishing I did things differently in my life. And hopefully audience that's watching this will, you know, maybe change the perspective and maybe do some different things in their life by not going to college because it really is a scam, as you were saying. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I hope so.
when I was watching this, it, it felt like it had like a Oliver Stone Savage vibe to it. Have you ever seen that movie from 2012? I have. I have. I'm going to take that as a compliment for sure. <laughs> that, that's a, yeah. I love that movie. Yeah. I, I just, yeah. The atmosphere of the film reminded me of Savages, especially with the, the masks that they wear in the movie. Yeah, um, definitely. Definitely. So as a director filmmaker, what is your fil- filming style and why? You know, I, I take a pretty natural approach to it all. Um, a lot of it, I just kind of go with my gut of like when you're on set and you're kind of sculpting a performance. If it feels good, then it's probably going to feel good on on screen. And uh, I love this idea of making movies about uh, political commentary that are so fun and flashy where you don't realize it. And I think mm-hmm. that's going to kind of be the niche that I'm aiming for. For sure. Hopefully, uh, you know, moving to other projects, we'll continue to work on that and get, you know, better films and projects. Yeah, kind of sculpt it. Yeah, definitely. So my last question is a two-parter. Um, do you have any other projects in the works, and where can we find you on social media? Yeah, so um, on social media, it's Seth Savoy on Instagram. Um, and for the next thing that's coming up, you know, I've kind of taken quarantine to really dive into some other projects reading-wise and also writing, but – I think the next one that I got, I can't say too much about, but I'm really going to push a a studio franchise. And I think I got something fresh and new that people are going to love. After seeing this movie, I absolutely loved it. Really excited to see where your career goes, future films. And um, hopefully uh, this weekend we can uh, catch up and check out the movie together. Yeah, dude, that would be awesome. Invite the Cinefellas. Tell them. Yeah. There's a few of us here in the Chicago land area. Maybe we'll try to drive up there this weekend and check it out. Yeah, that would be killer, dude. I'd love to meet you guys. Yeah, for sure. Well, I just wanted to say thank you, Seth, for taking the time out of your day to get interviewed. Cinefellas.com, I can't talk. I uh, had a great time with this conversation, and we'll uh, let you know when this interview is posted on the website later this week. Yeah, that sounds good, man. I, I really enjoyed this. Sounds good. Well, it was nice talking to you. Have a good rest of your day. All right, All right Logan. Talk soon. Bye. So that was my conversation with the director of Echo Boomer, Seth, really great, informative guy, really laid back, really easy to talk to. And and I probably could have asked him another 10 questions and talked to him for another hour because he was that easygoing and insightful and really making a really unique film, you know, based in Chicago, an issue that, you know, kids are tackling today. Even people in their 30s are still struggling, going to college, doing everything you're supposed to do and just struggling at the end of the day. And uh, really has a lot of great themes and messages here. And you see what these kids go through throughout the film. And some of them change for the good and some of them change for the worst, as you'll see. But a really great independent film. It comes out this Friday, November 13th. Uh, It's hitting digital, video on demand, and select theaters. And it's a movie I highly recommend. After seeing Echo Boomers, I think I would give a four out of five hair pieces. So do yourself a favor, definitely go check out this movie, support it, support independent filmmakers like Seth. Really great cast, really great ensemble, really great story, really great messages in this film. It's a movie you guys should definitely check out and I highly recommend. But besides that, like I was saying earlier, we have a lot of projects in the works, so stay tuned to our website, cinefellas.com, our YouTube channel, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We'll be putting out a lot of content in the upcoming months, especially during the holidays. And if you guys haven't already, go ahead and hit subscribe right here on our YouTube channel. We would greatly appreciate it. So this is Logan Myers signing out from the Cinefellas Podcast, episode 95. Until next time, cheers! God bless those wild rascals and God bless this beautiful country.